Hi Fast Passive Magazine and in this video I'm reviewing Rock Believer, the new album from The Scorpions. Now it's been a busy few weeks uh, in some respects for the quality of some of the classic legacy bands and their albums they've been putting out. Um, I've recently done a review for Jethro Tull and the Zealot Gene and obviously the new Saxon album, both are superb. And so I bought this wondering what it was going to be like. Was it going to be as good as what we class as classic Scorpions? And I have to say, I really think it is. Um, people are saying online and in, in the now spinning Facebook music group that it's like a, a roll back to the 80s. And in some respects, it is. The guitar sound is superb. Um, the first track is called Gas in the Tank. Great riff, typical, um, you know, Scorpions type riffage and stuff. Uh, mid pace rocker. And as you can tell with still having gas in your tank, it's a song about getting older. It's about them really. It's kind of like um, about them still going around the world on tour, still making music like this and how much they enjoy it. Superb solo from Matthias Jabs as well. Um, great opening song, absolutely great. The next one is called Roots in My Boots, which is track two. And this is, I've got one of these um, fast staccato type riffs that they did a lot on um, the albums you can see um, to the side of me here, Blackout and Low at First Sting. It's that kind of feel. Um, it sounds like classic 80s Scorpions, to be honest. And um, you know, it's another song about rocking and rolling. And, um, you know, again, the solo is just stunning. The third track in is Knock 'em Dead, um, which is another song about being in a band. <laughs> but to be fair, the Scorpions have always kind of lent into that and also talking about being fans of this style of music. And it's a classic 4 4 riff. Um, and you can tell that the, you know, it's a bit more perhaps, a bit more perhaps rock and roll. In the in the delivery, which I don't the kind of guitar um, motifs and some of the chord work is more leaning towards rock and roll rather than metal, which is different for the Scorpions in, in some ways. I mean, I've been a fan of the Scorpions since the first album I bought was Taken by Force in 1977, 78. Is that? Uh, and that was obviously with Yuli Roth on guitar very different uh, type of band and I've, I've, then I obviously bought Tokyo Nights and then I've moved on to when Schenker joined and Matthias joined as well for Love Drive etc and then became a huge fan right the way through the 80s. I kind of lost touch a bit in the 90s and then I carried on with things like Rock Forever and um, what's the other one called? Uh, yeah, the, the Raised on Rock one and um, uh, great stuff but but I, I have to say my 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 kind of allegiance to them had drifted a bit. But with this one, I'm back on board. Now, the next track, track four is, is Rock Believer. And this is a kind of, this is their, it's not a ballad, but it's got this kind of hard rock, stop start chords, riffs, um, softer parts. Um, the vocals by Claus are just, just superb. Um, and it moves into a, a wonderful chorus, um, wonderful guitar work. Now, the songs are all kind of around the three minute, four minute mark. There's a couple that approach five minutes, but they're mainly around three, four minutes. In fact, I would say majority of them are around um, three minutes, actually. So the guitar solos are economical, they're dramatic and exciting, but they are, they fit in with the song. I know Rolf Schenker sees himself as a composer, not just a rhythm guitarist, uh, you know, writing rock songs. And so everything is built around the songs more than anything. Uh, track number five is uh, on my CD, is Shining of Your Soul. And um, this, now this one, is a bit different. It's got kind of a reggae feel to it. Now, if some of you are thinking Scorpions and reggae, those of you with long memories and who bought the Love Drive album will remember the song called Is Anybody There, where they did a similar thing. So it kind of is the, is the brother or sister of that track. But the chorus is superb, as it was with that Love Drive track. Um, but it has that kind of reggae feel to it, but with power chords and as you'd expect from the Scorpions. 
Seventh Son is currently my favourite track from the album, and this one um, is very closely related to China White from the album Blackout. It's got that kind of boom, boom feel and the real fantastic guitar sound that they that the Scorpions have. That twin guitar metallic chords chords laying on top of each other, and it it just builds up. Um, to it, it doesn't get any faster, it stays in that groove just like China White and Claus Main's vocals are just brilliant. His voice on this album is just fantastic, you know, it really, really is. Um, you know, it's great, great song. That is my favorite. And let me know if you hear it, do you think it sounds a bit like China White? But I mean, you know, China White is one of my favorite Scorpions tracks, so I just thought they were just experimenting with something they'd they perhaps tried before then we have hot and cold which is written by mattis jabs himself it's the only one written by him nearly all the songwriting is by rudolph and claus themselves this is a kind of mid uh, pace rock and roll song um and another song that could easily be from a scorpions album in the mid in the mid 80s number eight is uh, when i lay my bones to rest um, this is another untempo rocker, um, and again, it's got a, a another song with a kind of more rock and roll feel, really. Number nine is only two minutes, 57 seconds long, and it's Peacemaker. This is a great driving song. It's a great song to drive to. Um, wonderful mid-paced rock and roll song, and it's about called cool Peacemaker, and in the times that we're currently finding ourselves in, it is probably a very, very apt a song lyrically but there's some great riff great riffage on this song absolutely fantastic number 10 is call of the wild which is a, another rock ballad that moves in the same kind of circles as the title track um great guitar vocals and it speeds up towards the end um this song is five minutes and 21 seconds long so it's as close as an epic as you're going to get and i love the as it moves towards not really, well it, it takes a while to get to the fade out but you've got some wonderful guitar playing um some kind of rolling stones type um uh sympathy for the devil type backing vocals a little bit some great ad libs from claws as i say it's a it's another contender for the best track off the album and the last track is the ballad now the scorpions do these type of ballads better than most people um you know and i think every scorpions album has had one of these and if you are a scorpions fan you know almost exactly what it might sound like um this one again is wonderfully written wonderfully performed and um and the, the guitar playing is very melodic and fits in very well with the music i bought the single cd version because <laughs> to be quite honest I didn't know there was a two CD deluxe version that didn't appear um, on the the, the, the platforms that I went to buy it from. Um, but it comes, so there are there is another version of this, so let me know what it's like. Do I need to upgrade? Um, it comes with a booklet, which I, I'll flick through as I kind of talk about it now. And it's got the, the lyrics in and, a, and the pictures of the band. And this is the first album that features Mickey D on drums. Um, Someone asked if that changed the sound or not. I, I personally didn't notice. I just thought it sounded more like a classic Scorpions album than the recent albums have. Um, not that there's anything wrong with them. I love the Scorpions. These are all my kind of CD versions. I've got loads on vinyl, but I love the, the CD remasters. But if you're expecting the Scorpions to have done anything adventurous or gone off in a different direction, they haven't. Um, but what they've done is they've kind of, they haven't revisited the 80s. Because what I'm saying, it does sound like they're cla classic 80s albums. You know, some of the songs here sound like they could fit in from, um, you know, Love First Sting or Blackout very easily. But I'm very cautious about saying, oh, it sounds like they're classic 80s stuff. Because it, in case it sounds like they're kind of, they're trying to recreate something. And I think that, you know, this is a band that is probably in their late 60s and 70s. All of us as, as humans, as you watch my video, we're all older than we were when these things came out, if you were a fan back then. 
and you know your life will be different and um, you can't recreate the past like a template you can use it to inspire you to create something new and i believe that the scorpions have created something new using the best ingredients and in their history and their heritage from the past and and i think it's it is one of their strongest albums for a long time and i do recommend it we're having a great time with some classic bands releasing some really really good albums and this is definitely um you know i said the saxon one was almost my heavy metal album of the year so far well there's another one uh, you know this one obviously is the, the scorpions write more kind of is pop the right word pop rock type kind of almost bad company kind of chord you know what i'm trying to say they they focus on choruses it's not just about the riffs and they don't write epic songs the, these songs are you know where they were in the 80s in respect that they're songwriters who happen to use hard rock and heavy metal as the kind of texture and the flavoring for their songwriting so that's the scorpions and rock believer and it's a great album and thank you for watching thank you for subscribing and thank you for listening if you're listening to this on the podcast and i really appreciate all your support and if you'd like to support me more then you can become a patron the details are at the end of this video and i shall see you very soon mm -hmm.